Welcome everybody. I see a lot of familiar faces in the room. Nice to see you all. Nice to have you with us. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the core to every great trading strategy, <coughs> trading zone strategy, an indicator, uh, a methodology called market profile. And <coughs> we've got about an hour to spend together. One of the things I hope to transmit, translate or relay to everybody in the room is the concept that market profile is actually quite easy. It looks and feels like a different indicator than something that you may have used in the past, <coughs> but don't let that um, scare you off. If you give it just a little bit of time, you'll come to recognize that it's a very easy uh, approach to trading and it'll really broaden your horizons and open up your eyes. And one of the beautiful things about it is that it can be applied to just about any trading system that you're already using. <coughs> we have, excuse me, <coughs> we have our own particular methodology built around the market profile approach. But uh, one of the beautiful things about it is it's in incredibly adaptable. So let's get over here to the slides. Uh, and just quickly, um, I always like to have a little disclaimer before we start so that it appears in my voice on the recordings, should the recording be made available. You should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in the light of your circumstances, your knowledge and financial resources. You may lose all or more of your initial investment. It's kind of important, especially when we talk about futures trading, <clears throat> we talk about uh, using leverage, right? That's when you put up less money than you're actually trading. The, the you know, Brokers lend you money that you can trade, so you put up $5,000, but you're essentially trading a $50,000 trade or a $100,000 trade on a small initial um, uh, deposit. So that's called leverage, and you have to be really careful because futures markets move quickly, sometimes erratically, and, and uh, that leverage can work in your favor, and it can also work against you. So please make sure that you do understand <clears throat> the, uh, the ins and outs, pluses and minuses of trading with leverage. A little bit about me, I won't get too uh, lengthy. On a personal level, I've been trading the market since 1992. Um, around 10 years after I began my own trading career, I ventured into the trading education sphere. That was in 2003, so that's roughly about 13 years ago. And I founded a firm called The Trading Zone. So the, tra the Trading Zone is where I spend most of my time every day in our live chat room. I just mentioned that I spent my almost my entire you know, adult career existing in a chat room. Um, but that's where you'll find me every day, myself and my uh, co-moderators. You can trade along with us. You can follow the methodology. You can ask questions. You can just uh, sit back and hear the market commentary. <clears throat> We're also going to demonstrate how our methodology interacts with the market. It's kind of a critical element because whenever you're evaluating a methodology or evaluating a system or a single indicator, whatever it is, uh, trading happens in real time, and I know a lot of people do that type of evaluation, you know, after the fact, looking at um, uh, historical charts or market replays. And the reality of, is, is that trading happens in a, in a real-time environment. So how you are able to deal with a market condition, jump on a trade, take advantage of an opportunity or a situation is very um, material to whether or not you're going to be able to use that methodology moving forward in real time in order to make money from it. So that's one of the reasons why we have the, the live trading room. It bridges the static information, the educational component of, of a trading course with the actual live here and now environment of the markets. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and you can, like I said, you can come and visit us in the, uh, in the chat room. You can take a five day trial and see what we do and see if how we approach the markets is something that you like and resonates with you. Uh, and if you want to take that trial, you just go to the tradingzone.com slash trial, or you'll see a trial button on, on, the, um, on, the, on the main page. So I'm seeing that for some reason. I'm not getting the full slide in here. Let me just move that over a smidge. Okay, there we go. Oops. All right, so I like to break down trading, uh, spe specifically in the futures markets, into two broad categories, two broad elements, 
and they are as follows, and you see in these two boxes, there's the mechanics of trading, which are things like <clears throat> doing technical analysis, reading a chart, using and understanding indicators, finding patterns, um, understanding the depth of the market, time and sales, trends, trend lines, etc. Right? Those are all the mechanics of trading. And the mechanics of trading, uh, believe it or not, are, are easily learned. And some people say, oh, it's difficult to become a trader, or how am I going to you know, put all these pieces together? The mechanics of trading is kind of like doing a puzzle. You find the right pieces, you find the right matches, you know, you've got an, uh, an empty space, you find the piece that matches the space. Um, you have a collection of, of things you've learned and then they appear on the charts in front of you. So given that, shouldn't it be therefore that uh, trading is easy, right? If it's just mechanical and anybody can learn it, does it mean that trading is easy? Well, of course not. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it and the statistics wouldn't be uh, what they are that, you know, many, many traders struggle to earn a living and make money from trading. And why is that? Well, that's because of the second block just below over here, which is the hum human elements of trading. You know, a Ferrari doesn't r win the, uh, the race, right? A hammer doesn't build the house. You need the human behind it to make it work. It's the same thing with the trading system. You need to have the skills of a trader and a good trading system. So you need the tools, which is the mechanics, and then you also need the hu human elements of trading. You need to understand your, the psychology. You understand who you are as a trader, what your strengths and what your weaknesses are, and how you can work on those strengths and avoid the weaknesses in order to amplify or expand on what you do well as a trader and avoid what you do poorly. You know, how good are you are building and following a trading plan? What kind of discipline do you have? And these are all um, things that we call, you know, bridging the methodology with the, with the individual. <clears throat> and it's critical. So if somebody hands you a book and says, here you go, this is a great manual on how to become a brain surgeon. Uh, I would hesitate before actually, you know, going under the knife with somebody who doesn't have an, any, the real, you know, hands-on skills and tools and the human elements. So my voice keeps cutting out. Really, is it? It could just be you. So those are the two uh, broad categories of, um, of 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 trading, right? And I, I I always make sure that I. Everybody understands that these are these two broad components. Component number one is the same for everybody. So when we talk about an indicator or a pattern or a setup or a trend, it's the same for any, everybody. N you know, if, if I'm looking at a specific item on a chart, it should look identical to you. That doesn't mean that we're all going to treat it the same way. But in today's conversation, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the top box over here, which is the mechanics of trading. And then we're going to drill down into one more level. Right. So, what are what are these mechanics of trading? What are the what are the uh, the elements that we need to address? Well, I have three basic cores. One is market profile, which is a big picture, you know, overriding um, uh, technical analysis of what the market is doing. Right. So that's the the broad approach to the more narrow approach, which is patterns and inflection points. To the third core, which is price action and order flow. And then I have plus one, which I call money management. So I'm often questioned, Greg, you say you've got three cores in the trading zone system, but I see four blocks over here. And that goes back to the prior slide that I just showed you. Market profile, patterns and inflection points, and price action, these are technical elements that don't change from one individual to another. However, the fourth core, the money management, how you're going to treat a trade, that refers to that second major block, which is, what is your own risk management? What is your risk tolerance? What size account are you trading? What's your psychology, et cetera, et cetera. So in, in essence, we have three plus one cores. And today, what we're going to do is focus on the first one, which is market profile. So I stress again that I move from the broad, the, the broad to the medium to the narrow. So when we talk about market profile, it is the broadest approach of the market. You're standing back, you know, 30, 40 feet, looking at the market with a broad perspective. It provides you a roadmap of where the market wants to go. And then from there, you drill down to uh, the other course. Pattern and inflection points and price action order flow. So in order to understand uh, you know, how you design this, this roadmap of the market, right? And I, the way I, I often um, refer to it is, you know, you want to drive from Boston to Chicago, you're going to head west. 
You don't just jump in the car and just start driving randomly. And believe it or not, some traders do that. They turn on their trading systems in the in the uh, in the morning without a, a clear idea of the direction that they want to trade in. And I'm not talking about a bias. I'm not saying, you know, hey, today I want to be long, and tomorrow I want to be short. I'm talking about a structured approach where, where the indicator says, <clears throat> I'm going to be looking for longs because the indicators and the patterns and the approach I'm using says the market wants to trade to the long side. And then you go and you look for patterns that meet that, that precondition. So it's the same thing when you jump in your car and you plan a road trip. Um, you don't just start, you know, driving randomly. You get out your road map or we used to call it a trip tick way, way back in the day, you know, before the GPS uh, was invented, and you plan your trip. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to get on this highway, I'm going to drive west, and this is the exit I'm going to take. And it's the same thing with trading. I'm going to plan out my strategy, and I'm going to use market profile to do that. So in modern day terminology, I guess, market profile is the GPS for the market. That's what we can say. So let's, let's understand a little bit about what it is. Let's go back to the roots of market profile and understand um, uh, from a definition, structural point of view, what is this indicator? How is it constructed? What does it do? What does it tell us about the market? And once we have a little bit of that, and I won't get into the um, the heavy math and, and complicated uh, formulas that are within it. I'm just going to explain to you what it does. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look through a number of charts because, of course, that's what every trader wants to do, look at charts. And the charts will, you know, in themselves reveal uh, what market profile tells you about the market. And we'll, we'll, I'll guide you through that along the way. So the first thing I will mention is that market, I didn't invent market profile. I'm a student of market profile. I'm an educator of market profile. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trader who uses market profile, but I, I am by no means the inventor or the creator of it. It was actually invented by a, um, a floor trader in the 1980s. Some say he was perhaps one of the best uh, uh, floor traders um, trading in the pits at the uh, CME, uh, the Board of Trade, rather. And his name was Peter uh, Stettelmeyer. And what he did was, was he recognized certain patterns that repeated over and over again in the markets. Certain what they, what we, we refer to them as structures. In other words, a market looks a certain way, and then the same outcome results over and over again, right? A market structure. And he said, well, how can I uh, apply a formula to this? How can I quantify what I'm otherwise witnessing in the markets day after day? So he, um, he applied a mathematical formula known as a um, standard distribution. And he didn't invent standard distribution, right? Standard dis distribution um, was invented by a mathematician in, in the late 1800s. So he took this, this concept of standard distribution and he applied it to the markets. So what does standard distribution mean? It's a statistical analysis of any data set, right? So a data set can be uh, students in a classroom. You have 100 students in a classroom. What's the average? Uh, grade that they got in their in their exam, and what's the standard deviation from the from the highest to the lowest? Who did the best and who did the worst? You may recall from your your school days that they used something called the bell curve. In my school, anyways, they did where students were ranked against each other. So you were ranked against the, the student who did the best in the class. And they would call you know they would call that bell curving um, your grade. So in order to do that, they would first have to find out who did the best in the class, who did the worst, and where the average student. Um, you know how the average student did, and they would create this distribution curve called called a bell curve. So what Settlemeyer did is he took the same mathematical approach and he appro he applied it to the to the um the, a single trading day, and the data set then became all the trades that took place in that one day. So every time a trade took place, it would add one of these little blocks on the curve, right? And as you move left to right. This is the this is the time uh, frequency. So every one of these um, increments left to right is a 30-minute increment. So if a price traded in that 30-minute increment, he would drop a little letter block, and the letter block just re just represented that particular 30-minute time frame. So the A letter block was, you know, 12 midnight to 12:30. B was 12:30 to 1 a.m. You don't have to worry about those those letter blocks. But what would happen is at the end of the day, what would be revealed is one price level that was traded more frequently than all the others, right? And it was easily identifiable because it would have the most letter blocks um, next to it. You know, right? it, it would jut out the fur furthest. That's what you get this, this concept of a curve. So we knew that this spot over here that I'm pointing to 
was the particular price level that traded the most frequently during one particular trading day. So that's, that's the complete data set is every trade that took place during a day. And then we're going to differentiate between the number of trades and the price level. And the question we want to answer is, which price level was interacted buyer and seller most frequently? And we're going to give that a name. We're going to call it the POC, which stands for point of control. So the point of control refers to a price level at which buyers and sellers interacted most frequently. Therefore, they agreed on this price most frequently. They agreed that this was the most fair price for this particular market on this particular day. So that acts kind of like an equal, equilibrium point. Everybody met at this price level. A lot of trades took place. We got the furthest level sticking out on the on the point of on the uh, on the curve, so it's now referred to as the point of control. And then we use this statistic st 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 oh my goodness statistics <laughs> to calculate one standard deviation, which basically means if I took the entire uh, data set and I wanted to encompass only 68.3 percent of it, where would the upper and lower boundaries be? And in statistics, they refer to that as statistically relevant price levels and statistical outliers, right? So an outlier is something that's outside of 68.3% and something that's relevant is inside 68.3%. Let's bring this back to trading. So what trading does, it says, okay, on this particular day, this price level traded more frequently than all the others. Given that we have a statistical evaluation that says 68.3% of all the trades that took place were between this upper level and this lower level. So phrase it another way, trades that took place outside, in other words, below here or up above here, are what we would call statistically irrelevant. They have very little market impact. Why? Why would they have little market impact? because very few trades were transacted at that level. If you're the only person who thought that, hey, this was a great level to buy at, nobody else agreed with you, well then you basically have become irrelevant. You know, it's the same way we say it takes a one lot trader to paint the high or paint the low of the day. It's not a statistically relevant price level. So the, the highest, the most relevant area is where buyers and sellers mo met most frequently call out the point of control, and then we move outward from there, we calculate one standard deviation, we get an upper value area and a lower value area. That's about as technical as I'm going to get. You can go a lot deeper and a lot more uh, technical into understanding market profile, but the beauty is you don't have to. It's kind of like getting your driver's license, right? You can learn how to rebuild your engine at the same time, but you don't need to know how to rebuild the engine in order to become a proficient uh, driver. So it's the same thing with getting a license for market profile. There's a lot more technical stuff that's going on behind the scenes, but if you want to use it and use it in your, in your trading to your advantage, there are a number of things that you have to know and that, and that knowledge base is actually quite limited. You don't have to go on and on and on. What you have to know is where was the point of control? That's where everything stems from. What was the most frequently traded price yesterday? Where's my upper and lower value area given that point of control? And where is my current price? Am I inside, above, or below? I can only be in one, one of three locations, right? I can only be inside the bracket, above it, or below it. Now, you don't have to go and calculate that on your own because there are people who are much smarter than me, and they've gone out and they've built these indicators that you simply have to overlay on your chart. So I'm going to show you a number of uh, situations, a number of different market uh, situations and I'm going to explain to you uh, what market profile is about the market at that time. What you'll come to realize is that in the world of market profile there are roughly 12 predetermined market structures. In other words, the market will look the same way in one of 12 different conditions. Once you learn these 12 conditions, you'll therefore know what's going to happen next. In other words, one of the potential market structures is a long trending market, right? Simple enough. One is a short trending market. One is a neutral market.
So if you know if you know this, if you can use your market profile indicator to understand which one of the structures the market is currently in, it then makes it infinitely easier to go and find the right trade to match that potential market structure. Meaning, if a market is structurally long, trending long, you don't want to be looking for shorts. You're going to get run over. So how come sometimes there's this great pattern and let's say as an example, a double top, right? I shorted a double top yesterday and it did incredibly well, took, made a great trade. And then tomorrow I had the exact same pattern and it failed miserably. How can that happen? The answer is in one situation, that pattern, right? So the, remember the pattern is, is core two of a methodology, not core one. Core one is profile, big picture. Core two is, is a, a particular pattern. Core two, the pattern double top said it's a shortable pattern. But in what environment did you take that short? Did you take that short in a structurally long environment? Well, that's going to spell failure. Or did you take that short in a neutral environment where the market is known to go back and forth and revisit levels? Or did you take that short in a structurally short market, in which case it probably paid off quite handsomely? So the pattern itself doesn't change. The environment in which the pattern presents itself now is somewhat different. So the first thing you do is you install the market profile indicator on your chart, and then you learn how to use it. Taking the broad approach, once again, what I'm looking at over here is a multi-day 30-minute market profile chart. Now I'm showing it to you so you can understand what profile is doing but this is not something that you trade off of. There was a time when traders would look at a chart like this and attempt to trade market profile using a similar chart, but it's, it's overly cumbersome. In a couple of slides, I'm gonna show you exactly how the charts look and how, you, how you're gonna look for trades off of them. But if you wanted to evaluate a chart on a multi-day basis, right? So this is a multi-day basis. This is um, a historical chart. It means we have a number of different days, one after the other. What is it showing you? It's showing us that the, the bracket, right, the upper level and the lower level, and you got this little tail sticking out here to the right mark, uh, uh, point of control. It's showing us that this is a multi-day environment where the market is structurally long. We can see how the value brackets are stacked one on top of the other. Now, it doesn't mean that there were no short opportunities on any of these days, but it told us from a market profile structure perspective, that this is a market that is structurally long, that we are building value, right? These are called value brackets, and the value of the market is increasing one day after the next, after the next. So let's say we were to open up on the following day, and we opened up roughly over here. The open of that market would be inside the prior bracket, right? So we couldn't necessarily say the market was long or short. We would still be inside the prior bracket. If, however, we opened up down here, now we have something quite different. Now we have a, a trade price location that is below a prior bracket. So potentially we are losing this long structure that we're gonna have a bracket that is now gonna form lower than the prior ones. So when you have a formation like this, this is what we call a market that's building value. Now, like I said, you don't have to do um, any heavy lifting. You have to look at those multi-day uh, stacked brackets. You know, it's, it's good exercise to do it. It'll teach you a little bit more about how to use market profile. But essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these lines upper value area, lower value area, point of, point of control. And we're going to overlay them. And now again, the indicators do all the hard work. We're going to overlay them on a chart in a time frame that you want to trade. So in this particular instance, I've overlaid this on a two minute or a three minute chart. That's, that's a two minute chart. That's my preference is to trade on a two or three minute basis. Could I have overlaid this on a five minute or a 15 minute chart? Sure. Right? The calculation is going on behind the scenes. 
I'm just taking the price levels as developed by market profile and telling the indicator, I'm not even doing it myself, the indicator is doing it for me. I'm saying just show it to me on a chart that I'm more accustomed to using. Because this thing up here in the corner, yeah, I can, I can evaluate it, I can see what it's doing, but it's not something that's easily um, you know, recognizable to traders. It's not something I want to trade off of. But this one below over here, this candle chart, this is something that resonates with traders. This is something that we're used to using, and we can already see how some of these levels, upper POC and lower value, are starting to act either support or resistance. So the indicator, that's the beautiful thing about technology. The indicator does it for you. It's going to be automatically transposed, and you're going to decide. I like to be a one-minute trader. I want to be a three-minute trader. I want to be a 15- or 20-minute trader. Maybe I want to be a 30-minute trader. Maybe you want to trade super fast on a 25-tick uh, chart. Sure, you can do it. The levels aren't going to change. The structure of the market isn't going to change. If you're below value and you're looking for shorts, that's the same condition whether you're on a three-minute or a 25-tick chart. So one of the beauties of market profile is we can use it for two things. One, to give you this broad structure of the market as I just explained, right? You can either be in one of three locations, inside the bracket, inside value, above it or below it. The market can either be building value, in other words, building trade locations above the prior bracket, losing value below the prior bracket, or consolidating inside the prior bracket. The next thing we can do, and this is the more interesting part, is we can actually use these levels to trade off of. So there's kind of a dual um, usage for market profile. We can take the value area highs, lows, point of controls, and we can actually use them as what we call inflection points, trade location, support resistance. Under, it goes under a lot of different names. And again, it's not exclusive to market profile. It'll fit in beautifully with any of the other systems or ideas you may be using. A lot of times, Fib traders are amazed by the fact that um, the value area highs, lows, and point of control end up lining up exactly with their uh, Fib retracements or Fib extensions. It's no huge surprise, right? We're using the same data set. So one of the beautiful things is the charts are clean, the charts are easily understandable, and now we have these great levels that we can use to determine market structure. Are we building or losing value? Or can I actually use one of these levels as a trading location? So again, from a, out from a, a broad you know, 30 feet back perspective, this is what a market looks like that's building value. Should be pretty clear. You have brackets stacked one on top of the other. From a also broad perspective, this is a market that's losing value. You can see the brackets. Charts are just configured a little differently but you can see the bracket behind there, losing value, right? The brackets are stacked one below the other. One was an environment that you wanted to be long in. One's an environment you want to be short in. Here's an example of a market that is what we call neutral. And you can see how the brackets are overlapped one on top of the other. This is what we call a neutral market, and this is a market that you can actually trade both sides. You can go long, you can go short. So why is it that sometimes you get this great pattern, like I explained earlier, and it leads to a huge runaway trending trade. And then that very same pattern, the next day, goes nowhere. Well, potentially, you took that pattern in a structurally short market, and it was a short pattern, so it worked out great. But then you did the same thing the next day, and you did it in a neutral market. Well, the neutral market tells you the market's going to go back and forth. It's what Traders refer to as a choppy market, right? The market chops, goes up a few ticks, down a few ticks, up a few ticks, down a few ticks. Well, wouldn't it just be brilliant if you could know that ahead of time? Well, that's what market profile is telling you. It's telling you this is a bracketed market. Market is neutral. Don't expect a long, a trending trade. Don't expect a, a monster breakout. You're not in that environment. Now, it may change. Structures of market profile can um, change. They can transition throughout the day. But they don't happen from one minute to the next. In other words, if you're in a neutral market, chances are you'll be in the neutral market for half to two-thirds of the day. Same thing with trending. If you're in a trending market, you're going to be trending for half to two-thirds of the day. So it's not like you have to look at the chart every two seconds and say, okay, what's the structure? What's the structure? You know, it's a slow-moving, meandering transition. 
So if I know the market is neutral as defined by one of these 12 structures of market profile, I'm going to look for trades that I can go either direction. I'm going to sell, sell resistance. I'm going to buy support. You know, that counter trend back and forth, ping pong. If, however, I know that the market is in a strong trending environment, well, I would not going to be looking for a long in this environment. This is a strong trending short environment as defined by one of the 12 structures of market profile. Let's go one step deeper, right? So now you have a kind of a, this, this broad approach, this, this kind of general knowledge of what market profile is. This is a, just a quick little recap. We're taking all the data that traded. We're plowing it into this calculation. The calculation is then spitting out the most valid, the most traded price level. We're calling it the point of control. And then the indicator is calculating one standard deviation from there to find an upper and lower value area. Given those three numbers, we know whether we're building value, losing value, or neutral. And you can use that combined with any other trading system to improve staying on the right side of the market. Or, as I'm going to show you now, we can use those same three levels as actual trading locations where you can decide to take trades. Now, one of the things that um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to refer to over and over again is that the vast majority of times, I'm going to say eight, sometimes nine days out of 10, the big trade of the day is going to launch off of a market profile level. And I know you're, you're saying, yeah, Greg, that can't be. It's impossible. Well, listen, these levels are waiting for you, right? These levels are waiting for you tomorrow when you open up your, your, uh, your charts, right? I didn't... Um, I didn't put them on, on the chart manually. They came uh, preloaded. As soon as I turned on my charts, I have yesterday's point of control, upper value area, and lower value area. And that's the same every day. So the market opened. We can see that the market opened above value, retreated, and had a almost perfect bounce off of this upper value area, right? Refused to travel back inside. It actually stayed in a kind of a meandering back and forth day. But this is the type of pattern and situation you're going to see over and over again, day after day, in every market. And those who are uh, members of the trading zone and who have been trading with me or in my chat room for a week, a month, a year, a decade, we have members who go back since day one, 13 years ago. It happens almost every day. And every day we say, wow, you know, market profile just never ceases to amaze us. The big trade of the day, that, that almost perfect, juicy location, almost always launches off of market profile. And I say almost always because markets, as we know, are not 100% predictable. They're not that precise. But you'll see from the charts, and I've taken a random sampling of charts to show you. Here's a classic, what we call a neutral or bracketed day. We can see that the entire day was contained within the prior upper and lower value areas. We opened up inside, right? The best trades taken at the extremities, and you can see how we held for support. As I explained to you, when you have a neutral day, you can take the buy support, sell resistance. There was actually a nice sell of resistance up over here as well, right, right off the beginning, uh, off the open, a couple of bars in. Now, I'm not suggesting that there were no trades anywhere inside the bracket. You know, other methodology has have different approaches. Um, I'm just showing you one particular approach to how we use market profile and trades off of these levels. So yeah, you know, there could have been a number of other opportunities, but I'm one who doesn't look for every opportunity. I like to kind of contain and narrow my, my scope and my field. I look for specific opportunities. So I'm really only looking for three very, very specific trade setups on any given day. And if I don't get it confirmed one of those three, then I'll be on the sidelines. As opposed to other traders who say, well, here's the market, here's the chart, there's something going on, I'm going to figure out what's going on. I do the opposite. I say, oh, there's a thousand things going on, and there's a thousand different guys putting on different trades. I just need these three things to happen, and I'm going to sit and wait for them to come to me. When they do, I'll be prepared to take the trade. So one of those three things is, well, if I'm inside the bracket, I'm going to wait for a touch of the upper or the lower in order to initiate a, uh, a trade in a two, what we call a neutral or two-sided market. Here's an interesting um, scenario. 
because this was a market that actually transitioned twice. We don't often see double transitions, in other words, from trending to neutral to trending, but in this particular day we did. So we opened up right at the upper value area and launched solidly off of it. So given that scenario, you'd be looking for longs, right? Um, but this is part of our, our, uh, our defined structures of market profile. What type of trade would I be looking for in that environment on that open? I would be looking for longs. Similar to that chart I just showed you, we opened up and held a, the pullback off this upper value area and the market rallied up. So you had two really great opportunities within the first 20 minutes on the long side. And then you had the transition. It failed. It came back inside the bracket. And then the bracket acted, top of the bracket, the value area high acted as resistance. And now we're back into a neutral scenario. So what happens? It goes and visits the opposite extremity, the lower value area. We're again in neutral. You can buy, buy support, sell resistance. It rallies back up and then starts to trend again. So this is a, a kind of a unique scenario where the market actually had uh, more transitions than it normally does. But you can see, and again, I'm not suggesting that there were never any trades anywhere else inside. What I am pointing out is on this particular day, there are five defined trades where all off of the value lines, right? And those value lines, they're there. They're waiting for you tomorrow. If you install and, and understand how to use the indicator, you don't, have to, you don't have to change anything tomorrow morning. You open up your charts and they're there. You just have to know how to use them. Um, so here is a kind of a kind of a sloppy trade day where the market came back, retreated back towards value. And we had no levels to work on up over here. So as I mentioned, sometimes you have to wait, right? You, you don't always get that trade right off the open. We'd like to. We'd like to always have one of those perfect setups leveraging off of a, a, one of the levels right off the open. Sometimes you have to wait until the midday and it comes and once again visits the, um, the value levels. Um, this actually, if we were to flip this chart around, if you, turn, if you were to turn this upside down, it looks exactly like uh, a chart I just showed you where the market rallied above the bracket. The exact same thing, but it did so below the bracket. Opened up below in the previous example, or two examples ago, we opened up above and it came down and it bounced off the upper, then it bounced off the upper again and then it took off to the upside. And this is a mirror image. We opened up below, ran up to value. I actually missed one over here. Could have highlighted that one. All right, one, two, and three. So again, you know, were there other trades that somebody else see it like a, a really nice double bottom over here that fit in with their methodology? Potentially, did somebody see a, a re-entry to catch more of this downside move? Potentially, but what I'm saying is, if you're the type of uh, trader that I am, and if you want to use that type of approach that says, "Listen, I'm gonna, I'm going to um, plan out my my trading business with the following parameters. This is what I want to see happen. This is how I'm going to confirm it when it does happen, and I'm going to wait patiently until it reveals itself." Right? And if you do that, what you'll see is that uh, almost every given day, you will have these crystal clear, beautiful setups off of market profile. This is an example of using a, um, a prior level, meaning a, a historical bracket. And I'm trying, kind of just touching on a number of different approaches that we use to using the, these levels. Um, the, the trade itself, the setup itself is one of three, because we only look for three setups. But the locations at which they can happen can be today's developing levels, yesterday's level, or historical, what we call historical prior levels. So you can see that this market over here opened up. We had nothing We had nothing from yesterday. The level was all the way down over here, but we were able to use a level from two days prior. And it met the criteria, and it rallied up. And here I'm kind of showing two days. Again, you can see how the levels came in and, and interacted on those particular days. This is another example of what we call a transitional market. So again, what do I mean by a transitional market? I mean, the market opened up uh, neutral. We're inside the bracket. We're prepared to trade both sides of it, right? Neutral, back and forth. You want to buy support, sell resistance. And then it transitioned. It went from a neutral within the lines to a trending market where it found its, uh, its, found its momentum and, and rallied up.
So if you wanted to stick to the the pure pure uh, you know three setups that I'm talking about, then you would have had one, two, and three, and um, you wouldn't have had much over here. Doesn't mean that there weren't other again. Doesn't mean that there weren't other potential setups there. I'm just kind of explaining how using the levels the way we do in this particular um, in this particular approach. This is also a, a transitional market. This similar to that CL crude oil that I showed you way at the beginning, where we had two transitions. So neutral runs up, fails to stay above the bracket, comes back inside, and you have one, two, three, four five trades and we transition again to a trending short. So was it again an interesting market because you had neutral, trending long, back to neutral and trending short. Those uh, then those scenarios are infrequent. Most of the time a, a market will transition once. In other words, it'll spend a good deal of time outside the bracket and then it'll come back to, to neutral before the close of the day. Or the reverse. It'll start off neutral, a little bit of back and forth choppy action, and then it'll bust out, and it'll spend the last third of the day uh, trending. That's that's uh, the vast majority of the time you'll see tra one, one transition. But the, the the nice thing about market profile is it defines for you when the where those transitions are going to happen, because we have we know that the market can only be in one of three locations: inside, above, or below. So we know by the definition of these levels, you know where am I looking for trending activity? When where am I looking for two-sided activity? The other thing is that more often than not, the big trade of the day, in other words, when you go back and you say, hmm, if I only had one opportunity today, if I can only put in one trade with relative safety, right, with, with um, you know, I don't have unlimited uh, opportunities to take a trade. I just have one, but I need something that I can rely on. It's going to point me and show me the way every day. What would that thing be? And that would be a trade-off of one of the value areas. So the big moves happen almost all the time off of a rejection of one of the one of the value areas. Value, value area high, value area low, uh, not necessarily POC. So. As a conclusion, I'm a little early, but I think we got through a, a good part of it. Leave some time for a couple of questions. Here's this morning's chart, right? Just to show to show you <laughs> more evidence, you can see that I snapped this chart um, at around 11:30, and this is this morning's chart of the E-mini S&Ps on a three-minute basis. So if I asked you. You've got one opportunity today. You've got one shot. And you've got a market profile indicator. Go and find one single trade that will beat all other trades. And this is the type of thing that market profile delivers regularly over and over and over again. Where's the challenge, right? Wow, Greg, that looks so easy. Well, the challenge is that when the market opened up and zipped back and forth and up and down and got into this whole big mess, traders, most traders, get overly anxious and caught up in the, um, in the prospect that they're going to miss the opportunity. So they jump into things or they jump on trades that don't meet their criteria completely, that they're not um, you know, fully confirmed or they find a long pattern, but in a short environment. They find a short pattern in a long environment, and something about something else that's going on, uh, or their bias, or something that somebody said convinces them that they'll take the trade, even though it's counter to what they're otherwise seeing on the chart. And then by the time you get this, you know, beautiful market profile pattern, rejection off of yesterday's lower value area, they're questioning and doubting what they're looking at. So it's not that, um, you know, it's not that this particular pattern is not effective and valid. It's the validity has been diluted by the fact that you already traded a bunch of stuff that was not 
you know, uh, confirmed or proper. So traders tend to get over anxious, jump on trades. Like I said, if you reduce, my, one of my mottos in trading is reduce and simplify. As you can see, my charts are incredibly clean. I do have a, a couple of other indicators that I'll put on, but not any more cluttered than what you're looking at. Charts are very clean, easy to understand. And my motto is always reduce and simplify. Reduce the number of things that you have to evaluate. Reduce the number of trades or patterns that you're looking for. And that in turn leads to a simplification of your trading. I found and I have found that working with traders in the past you know, 15 years roughly, that most traders do the opposite. They try to find something that is unique and exciting and complicated because they feel that if it has a little bit of complexity to it, then potentially they're the only ones who are going to figure this out and it's going to be their hidden secret, their little gem. The reality is that when something is complex, complicated, it causes you to evaluate or over-evaluate and miss the opportunity. If I were to add one additional indicator to what I'm already using, it's not that I would have to now consider one more element before taking a trade. I would have to evaluate this one more element combined with everything else that's on my chart so it becomes exponential, right? So I don't, as an example, I don't use a CCI, but let's say I use the CCI indicator. It's not, oh, the CCI is doing this, boom, let's take the trade. It's what's it doing compared to price, what's it doing compared to another indicator that I'm using in RSI, a stochastic. What's it doing compared to the moving averages? What's it doing compared to market profile? So it's not one extra indicator, one more thing to evaluate. It becomes exponential. And traders do that so often. Let me try to bring in one other thing and I'll filter out this bad situation because I saw that happen the other day. So you've gone from three indicators to four indicators on your chart. It's not three plus one is four, right? It's an ex it's exponential. You were looking at nine potential situations, and now you're you're potentially you're looking at sixteen. So, I'm always a believer in reduce and simplify. Reduce the number of markets you look at. Reduce the number of indicators you use. By the way, most indicators are redundant. You know they're telling you the same thing over and over again. Why? Because they all come from the same data set. It's not as if one indicator is pulling different data. All the data is the same. You have your your price level and you have your volume and they may be measuring a change in price or a change in volume, um, but they're all essentially coming from the same data set. So stacking them and using you know, multiple indicators only leads to confusion. Reduce and simplify. Reduce the number of indicators, reduce the number of markets you're looking at, and reduce, most importantly, reduce the number of uh, trade setups. So trade setup, example. I'm in a short environment, I'm below value, I'm looking for rejection of lower value area, right? When it gets there, I'll use my momentum, momentum, my momentum indicators to either accept or reject the entry. That's the, the third core that I talked about earlier, trade execution. I'm just going to accept or reject once it gets there. So does it mean that somebody didn't have a trade that launched off of this level and drove up to value? Absolutely. But if that's not in my uh, roster, of patterns and setups I'm looking for, then I'll leave it for the next guy. And I have found that reducing and simplifying has been probably one of the two most powerful things, not, not, not indicator related, right? Externally related things that has changed my trading over the past 15 years. Um, the other, if you want to know, so reducing and simplifying would be one, and the other is taking partial profits on trades to protect them and get to zero risk as quickly as possible. Those are probably the two biggest elements. From a technical perspective, it's market profile. Market profile is a GPS to the market, it's a roadmap to the market, and you're going to see patterns that pop up and reveal themselves just like this every day. Again, this is yesterday's chart. Snap the picture at around 11.30, 11.45, just before coming in here. So that, my friends, um, concludes the trading zone approach to using market profile. I'll make a, one more comment, which is the following, that I've shown and I use probably about 20 to 25% of the available information from the market profile indicator.
So sometimes people say to me, Greg, you know, I've studied market profile and I, you're, you're hardly even scratching the surface. And I say, that's right. You know why? Because I reduce and simplify. So, you know, there is a whole bunch of other stuff that I can get into. I've had um, educational sessions when we've gone three and four hours just talking about market profile. Is it going to help your trading? No. It'll make you more knowledgeable. I find it thrilling and interesting and I love having those, those conversations. But ultimately, it doesn't change what you do tomorrow when the trade shows up. The other beautiful thing is it really works um, in any market. It is not market specific. The, uh, Clay, the, the charts that I was demonstrating here were uh, Ninja Trader charts. And we provide our members with the market profile indicator for Ninja Trader. Um, Sierra Charts has a built-in market profile indicator, so it's just a matter of knowing how to use it and configuring it properly. Um, most of the other ones, it's a third-party add-on. You have to buy it. Sometimes they're like 50 bucks, sometimes they're 100. Nothing tremendously uh, insurmountable. Um, now, I'll make my last comment, which is if you want to, oh, somebody was supposed to post an offer, right. If I have a, an additional video that goes a little bit deeper, and that's, there you go. You guys are good. There it is. Um, it's a one-hour video. Video. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it sounds like it's on VHS. <laughs> if you've got the old Betamax machine, it's a recorded webinar that I did uh, some time ago. It's a little bit more in-depth than what I've done here. So if you want to, I'll reiterate a lot of the things that I've talked about here, but I always take a, a fresh approach. Uh, there's no cost. It's a free offer. You can, you can register for it, and you can watch it at a, uh, at a later time if you want. Um, no obligation whatsoever. It'll give you a little bit more information about market profile. I go a little bit deeper. And also, if you want to um, join us and see what, you know, most importantly, as I started off the, uh, the discussion, trading is a real-time endeavor, right? It happens in real time. So whatever I'm going to show you on these charts, it's static. Nothing is moving. Nothing's flying at you at 1,000 miles an hour. Trading happens in a real-time environment. And if you want to see how the methodology and how market profile interacts in a real-time environment, then come take a trial. Uh, meet the gang. We've got a great community. We've got great moderators, and you know it's part of uh, it's part of your trading education. It costs you nothing. You'll get to know us. Maybe you'll like what you see. You'll decide to stick around. Um, and if not, no harm, no foul. So you can go to the tradingzone.com and hit the trial button. You can sign up for a trial tomorrow, next week, whenever you want. And uh, definitely have a look at that other video if you want to learn more about market profile. I thank you all very much for the opportunity and for uh, uh, allowing me to be here today. And I thank the, uh, the folks over at uh, Trading Pub for putting on these events and inviting me. And on that note, I will send it back to, uh, to Raleigh. Thanks, everybody.